Fielding. The purpose of this hearing is to address the impact of the Wassenaar arrangement, which was recently amended to propose export controls for cybersecurity products. And I'll recognize myself for an opening statement. The House Homeland Security Committee Subcommittee on Cybersecurity, Infrastructure Protection, and Security Technologies and the House Oversight and Government Reform Subcommittee on Information Technology meet today to hear from key industry and government stakeholders about the impact of the Wassenaar arrangement that it will have on American people, on American businesses, and on the cybersecurity industry. I first want to start off by thanking my friend, Mr. Will Hurd, the gentleman from Texas, for co-chairing this hearing. Today, we're doing what Americans would like to see more of in Congress. Two committees that don't often work together are able to and happy to come together to tackle an issue that's extremely important and relevant to national security and to the security of individuals' personal information. Congressman Hurd and I share the belief that one of our core duties here in Congress is to bypass the jurisdictional roadblocks and make real progress towards keeping our citizens safe. To the issue at hand, we know that private industry in America is excellent at responding to consumer demands. Many companies, including some of those here today, pride themselves on guaranteeing the security of their customers' personal information. Others represented here exist solely to help in securing that information. They also secure vital sectors of society, such as critical infrastructure and the financial sector. Their success hinges, in part, on their ability to guarantee their own security. Today, I hope to hear from our witnesses on how the Wassenaar arrangement and its implementation would affect these objectives. The Wassenaar arrangement was established 20 years ago to apply to conventional arms and dual-use goods and technology. Changes made in 2013 sought to extend export controls to cybersecurity intrusion and surveillance software and technology. These changes were motivated by a desire to prevent authoritative regimes from repressing their people. This intent is noble. Yet the administration's implementation effort resulted in unified dissent from the technology and cybersecurity industries, from academics and researchers. The energy and financial sectors also voiced deep concerns. And they were echo echoed by civil society groups who said that the proposal could make communicating about security vulnerabilities almost impossible in certain cases. The federal government engages in countless ways with the American people and our international partners. When proposing actions, the government should, at a minimum, not do harm to its own people. I'm interested to hear from our government witnesses how they believe this arrangement will successfully deter the accumulation of digital weapons which aren't constructed in factories, which don't need physical space for storage, and which don't depend on traceable means of transport. I hope to better understand how they believe this export control framework can be effectively applied to intrusion software. I agree that we should strive to limit dangerous technologies from falling into the hands of bad actors, but national security and Americans' personal security can't be sacrificed in the process. There are many ways the United States strives to combat human rights violators, and I hope to hear today why this route wasn't chosen over other options. As we can see by the variety and the size of our witness panel, the Wassenaar arrangement has broad implications. Recent reports and the witness testimony today demonstrate that we are far from a consensus on this issue. The administration's top three stated priorities include, and I quote, protecting the country's critical infrastructure from cyber threats, improving our ability to identify and report cyber incidents, and engaging with international partners to promote internet freedom and build support for an open, interoperable, secure, and reliable cyberspace. I assume that our gov government witnesses are well versed in these goals and their prioritization. Yet, in reading the comments to the proposed rule and general thoughts on the cybersecurity section of the Wassenaar arrangement, one sees a probable contradiction in the first two goals. Additionally, 
I think it's unlikely that this arrangement achieves the open and interoperable cyberspace that is in the public's interest. If we are to expect the cybersecurity provisions of this arrangement to be workable, we need to make sure that our stated intentions and actions are not contradictory. If we can't do that, I question why, as a country, we are agreeing to this updated arrangement. Just last month, Congress passed legislation to encourage the sharing of cyber threat uh, information. Both the private sector and the government stand to benefit from the increased flow of valuable cyber threat information. Today, we need to hear whether the Wassenaar arrangement would have a counterproductive impact on such sharing and whether it would undermine the law that the President just signed. As a nation, we advocate for human rights and we assist those harmed by authoritarian regimes. However, we must first and foremost safeguard the security of our nation and our citizens. I look forward to hearing from the witnesses about the best path forward and how we can come together to best protect the American people. And I yield back.